As the country gradually opens up, dealing with coronavirus anxiety is not easing up. No, given all the conflicting messages we get every day trying to figure out how to be okay, may seem like an impossible task. So in today's Relationship Reboot, we're finding out how being resilient can be very helpful. Joining us now is our Relationship Guru, Dr. Kirsten Lynn Seal. Kirsten, great to have you with us. Great to be here. Let's start with this idea of resilience because uh, what is it exactly? Yeah, so resilience is basically the ability to sort of bounce back and be able to be okay in the face of um, a lot of difficulty. Okay, and um, one of the things that's interesting is I think that in general we have the idea of resilience being sort of like a like a cup that's either full or half mm. full or empty. Right. That resilience is something we either have or we don't have. And if we look at it that way, that's that's really kind of a deficit model. I think of looking at looking at resilience as something that is a practice that we can get better at, and it's sort of a journey that we can go on to develop better. So like you say, I think you say like a muscle, like you can make it stronger and you can make yourself more that's, resilient. That's exactly right. That's do, exactly how right. How do we do that? Well, so so there's there's a couple of things you want to think about. Like there's a lot of research on resilience. And so I kind of pulled out what I thought were the most important things to sort of have in mind. The first thing to do um, is to take action of some sort, right? Like in any given situation, even if it's a small action, like if you're if you're worried about politics, you get involved in a letter writing campaign or writing postcards, or if you're you know w really worried about the pandemic, uh, you can make masks, you can bring masks to people, you can buy food for people, right? Even little tiny um, gestures can make you feel empowered, which is part of the piece around resilience saying, I actually do have some agency here. Mm. The second thing you want to do is connect with others. Um, and we've, you know, we've talked about this a lot and it, it's because it remains true. The more we can connect with others, again, even if for a brief time or over Skype or FaceTime, any of that will help us be, be stronger within. Mm. Um, and the third thing that I would say, and this one can sound sort of tough, but I really, really recommend people working on it, practicing it, trying to do it. And that is, while at the same time acknowledging this really difficult reality that we're living in right now, you also need to hold hope that things will be better. Mm -hmm. I have, I know I've seen in my neighborhood yard signs that say it will get better. And sometimes I look at them and I think, I hope you're right. And sometimes I look at them and I think, yes, they will, right? Mm -hmm. Things are always gonna go up and down, and we're living in a lot of uncertainty right now, but being able to acknowledge reality while holding hope is another really good way to build resilience. I like this idea. You mentioned resilience as a strength because yes. it's not just about being Pollyanna-ish and saying like, hey, everything's gonna be all right. Like, no, no, it's about getting knocked down and finding that internal strength. And sometimes you draw on external forces to get that internal strength, but it, yes. that's what it's about. It's not, it's not being unrealistic. Exactly, it's not saying like everything's fine and there are no problems. Yeah, it's acknowledging are. problems, right? While also yeah. holding out the hope for these are things we can do, right? Mm. And this goes back to the deciding what we can control versus what we can't control. Mm -hmm. That's a really big one too. And one of the things that, that I've been thinking about lately is, is what I'm doing helping or is what I'm doing harming in terms of yes. in, in general. But what you're saying also is you need to ask that of yourself too. Yes, that's exactly right. Right, like uh, you know, a couple nights ago when I, I, uh, I didn't really eat dinner, like a proper dinner, and I spent an hour and a half on Twitter. After that, I did not feel so good. Right. And while I need to stay informed, and it's important for me to check Twitter, I didn't need to be on it for that long. And so that was a really clear example of what I was doing was not helping. All right, this advice uh, is helpful for people as they're dealing with all of the world events right now, but it also is useful in relationships. So give yes. us a couple quick tips as to how we can apply this resilience training model to our, yes. our relationships. Right. Yeah, so w the thing to remember is that we are really in a shared, what I call, well, what the field calls a shared traumatic reality, right? We are all experiencing this trauma to different varying degrees, but we are all in it. And so one of the things to remember is to try to give each other and yourselves as much grace as possible, as much as you can muster in the moment. Sometimes it's hard, but it's really, really helpful. The next thing is you wanna try to let go. If your partner and or spouse has a flashpoint, something mm -hmm. that irritates them, 
try to let go of that. Try to, again, that is connected with giving grace. Um, and, the, and the third thing is to really remember that everybody's level of anxiety is different. People respond differently. And this is the place where we actually do have some control. We can choose how to react or respond to people or events. And this is where if we can give grace, if we can come at it from a gentle place, this will help our relationships stay stronger as we are helping strengthening our own inner resources and supporting our partners inner resources at the same time. I love that idea, just giving a little grace. I've also heard compassion too when we're having difficult discussions or, or, or um, experiencing yes. stress right now. Kirsten, yes. thank Very you much so much. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks, take care. Mm -hmm.